Uh, great. So, um, I guess we we came up with the idea of doing this workshop uh, yesterday. So honestly, I haven't haven't prepared that much. Uh, so uh, I, I wanted to start um, to have a sense about if you if you guys, especially the one high team, uh, if you could uh, were were able to review some of the stuff that we were building the docs or yeah, do you have a sense of how much do you know about the architecture, about the idea of uh, these little labs, how they work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, me personally, I've, I've gone through the documentation, uh, the Notion book, and I've, I've worked out this morning how to integrate the, uh, the disputable app into our apps. Um, and it all seems to make sense. I can see pretty specifically what's required and, and what needs to be what, what interfaces need to be implemented. Um, yeah, I personally, I think I have a pretty good understanding of at least how to integrate into an app. I'm not, I don't have a full understanding of the way that agreements works or really the core in, in depth, but um, I think that's probably mm. not necessary right now. But yeah. 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 Cool. Well, maybe maybe actually that's uh, that's good. I mean that you that you understand how to integrate uh, or how to make an app disputable without knowing how much about how the code works. Uh, I think that's good. Uh, it's a nice abstract abstraction there. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, Fabri, Rodri, not sure if you had a chance yeah, to. Yeah, uh, personally, I'm kind of in the same spot as Will. I mean. Uh, reviewing the, yeah, the architecture, and, yeah, I have a basic understanding as well of how to make it disputable, but yeah, I, I don't have the, like, the full picture, I just need to yeah, yeah, get more on that. Yeah, I, I read the, from my part, I read the, the architecture the document that you shared some time ago, uh, but I read it like two weeks ago, uh, but didn't have the chance to, to check the, the PR you created. Uh, but cool. yeah, I, I have uh, some understanding of that. Cool. Uh, so yeah, maybe um, like the the most important thing uh, for us to know is is trying to see if this uh, new kind of framework or, or protocol to make uh, apps disputable makes sense in terms of how. Um, how much do you need to change your apps to make them disputable if you think that it's like a disrupting change or uh, if you if you feel like the, it's adding too much overhead you know um, I'm trying to sense that and and of course if you would like to uh, get more into the details like if you see any any optimization that could be uh, applied to the current uh, implementation in terms of making things, easier uh, to developers or to users that are going to be interacting with, with our apps. Uh, uh, that would be that would be super good. Um, but I think for now we could uh, go over the, the architecture one more time all together uh, to make sure when we are all on the same page so you can uh, continue interacting on your side uh, with your apps uh, to to more or less try to answer these these questions that I I just mentioned. Um, so, um, yeah, and and we can probably go over a few examples. I have the the Boutin app uh, and the the proof of concept I did on the delay app a few days ago. Um, let me start with with this. Um, I'm sure I'm going to share my screen. Um, Can you see my screen there? Yep. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, I think this is probably the most important uh, thing to notice, like how these <clears throat> these build apps are, um, yeah, how how we, how we thought about them. Um, agreement is a, is an Aragon app uh, that is basically handling all the all the interaction with the court and with the staking pool. Uh, so that's why I was saying to Will that probably it's a good a good thing that you understood how to make an app disputable without knowing too much uh, about how the Aaron code works. 
because here is where all the all the disputes, the challenging logic is going to be taking place. Uh, all the all this taking uh, logic is going to be taking place here as well. So basically, your apps don't need to uh, know uh, how the core protocol works. They don't need to know nothing about um, the staking pool that the user is actually uh, using among any any organization uh, to handle like um, collaterals. Uh, in order to, to submit actions to, to any of these apps. Um, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm assuming you know, uh, you already know that, but basically the idea of <clears throat> the staking pool here is that you can define for each of these apps uh, like a collateral requirement in order to for people to submit new actions. So in the case of the delay, you could, could think as, okay, in order to submit a new script that will be executed at some, some time in the future, you will need to I don't know, uh, deposit some some collateral to do that. Then, if a challenger appears, the challenger will need to deposit another collateral. You can specify which is the token that you will use for the collaterals, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but again, all this uh, happens in the happen in the in the agreement tab. And part of the architecture is. I would say it has two two parts. I'm going to get into the details in, in the code uh, soon, um, but we I, I would say we can split them into two two main uh, flows. One is the registration uh, part, and the other one is basically the, the interaction uh, for any specific action that is happening in any of these disputable apps with the uh, with agreement app. So we, we need some sort of communication here, like a, every time, I don't know, a new a new boat appears in the boating app, we need to communicate to the agreement, hey, okay, uh, someone has created a new boat, please uh, register that, and in case you uh, receive a dispute or something, just let me know, and I will handle uh, how to how to treat that. Uh, um, and, and in terms of the, the registering uh, flow, uh, that's basically the process of linking an app to an agreement. Um, so we, we define a few, uh, not complex, but a few few steps there, how how an app uh, should be linked to an agreement. And that's, it's, that's really good because uh, um, we build it in a way that you could turn your current deployed um, Aragon apps into uh, disputable apps, upgrading them. And linking them to an agreement, so you don't need to like redeploy or migrate status uh, and all that. So, um, unless you have any questions uh, about this, I guess uh, you can. Uh, I will try to share some some code, uh, Solid Eco, to be more specific about how this works, and probably we can serve a uh, few examples. Um, yeah, to have a better understanding. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Um, okay. Probably starting with the interfaces. Probably the best. So as you can see, um, this this interface is um, basically what I was telling. Uh, before uh, you have a way to link uh, an agreement and you have a way to interact with that agreement based on the the different phases uh, or yeah, the different things that could happen to, to an action uh, in, in in one of your disputable apps when i when i say action i is the terminology that i'm using to refer to a vote for the case of voting the, the, the delayable for the case of the delay app an entry for the case of the registry app uh, since we need to define like a like a shared uh, concept for all of them in the uh, in the context of an agreement we call them actions uh, so when I say action just uh, just to be clear about that um, and this view double is probably uh, uh, is the is the action but in terms of the in the context of the of the disputable app so when you see uh, this field of ID, this means uh, the thing that is being uh, that could be you could you could identify uh, the action that you can you can identify in the disputable lab, 
and the action ID again refers to the to that that action button in the con in the context of the agreement. Not sure if it's confusing. Uh, would love to receive more feedback about that. Um, but yeah. Uh, so let's start with the uh, with the linking process. Um, I'm here looking into the uh, like a base disputable app. So apart from setting this uh, or providing this interface, we build like a base disputable app that already solves uh, part of the of the of the of the linking process or or part of the the communication between the, the agreement and the disputable app that it's probably shared among uh, all these disputable apps. So, for example, let's take a look at the at the linking process. Um, so, for example, what we're doing here is basically uh, calling the agreement and telling the agreement that uh, the app is basically trying to register uh, uh, to to that agreement. Uh, the agreement is going to perform some some validation. Again, I'm trying to abstract how the agreement app works. But it's basically going to check, OK, this app has never been uh, registered, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And basically, uh, and sorry, one more thing. Uh, yeah, apart from, sorry, showing that. Let's, let's show it from here. Sorry, here is the register uh, um, uh, function in, in, the, in the agreement app that is basically going to call uh, this set agreement uh, function in the disputable app. Uh, sorry, I was, I was uh, uh, yeah, I was forgetting that part. Um, so when, when you call the register uh, function uh, in the agreement, uh, you're basically indicating the disputable app that you need to register, plus the collateral requirements or, or collateral settings that I was uh, mentioning before. And basically, the agreement tab is going to call this uh, callback again to the to the disputable lab, saying, "Okay, uh, this is me. I uh, just uh, make sure you save me somewhere because you will need to interact with me at some point in the future." And once you have done that, uh, basically, uh, we define uh, again a protocol uh, that needs to happen between the, the agreement uh, and the disputable lab that basically is trusted. So both parts need, need to trust each other. What I mean with this is, for example, let's see um, a case uh, when when a new um, action uh, appears in, in a disputable app. Let's say a new uh, delayable is, is submitted to the delay app. The delay app needs to notify the agreement uh, that something happened so the agreement can, can receive can allow receiving disputes or challenging uh, that thing that was uh, registered or happened in your disputable app. So for example, the, this basic disputable app uh, offers uh, a function to do that uh, with uh, to, to communicate that to the, to the agreement app that basically is called uh, new action. And basically you, you're notifying the agreement app, okay, this is the, the identifier for the thing that happened uh, in the disputable lab. This was the guy uh, submitting that. And this is the context. This is probably uh, more like, a, yeah, I'm going to avoid this for now. It's a, it's a way to specify some specific information about uh, the thing that it's uh, happening in the disputable lab. It's uh, something that we need for, 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 the, for the arbitration protocol. Um, in terms of the evidence and all that, but I'm going to uh, avoid that for now. And and basically, once we have uh, once we have registered this bit of lab, once we have started notifying the agreement tab that things started to, to appear in the dispute of lab, the agreement will be able to start calling these callback functions uh, that you will need to handle in your um, in your dispute of lab. So. Probably this is the first uh, part that you will need to change or to handle differently in your in your disputable labs. Because uh, for now, uh, the, the registration part is more like uh, you, you can solve that while at the installation or upgrading uh, process of your your DAO. Like then you you will need to figure that out uh, only once, and and it's not going to happen. Uh, 
in the Discordable app itself. So it's more like a configuration stuff. And the new action is like a, a, a new step that you need to add to your entry point. You can see that as the as the as the forward entry point of your of your app or any other entry point that you have where actions are, are going to be created. Um, but again, this is probably the new new part uh, that you will need to handle. Basically, um, as you can see, we have four four callbacks here. Um, Challenge, allow, uh, rejected, and voided. Basically, uh, this means uh, a notification when when a dispute is is being challenged. So, again, we're not defining any any specific behavior here in the base disputable app. You will need to handle that entirely. Probably the most common use case there is to pause the action. Uh, in the case of the delay to pause the delayable, in the case of the voting to pause the vote and wait until that is figured out by, by the court. But it's again up to you and you will need to handle that. And then you have the three possible outcomes. So it's super simple. One one to one notification when this with all this challenged, and then three not three possible notifications um, to either say, okay, we that action was allowed by the by the protocol by the by the by our own court. That uh, the action was uh, rejected or or it was voided. Void basically means, uh, for example, in the case um, a jurors in, in, in court could refuse to vote because of lack of evidence or I don't know. We can have weird situations where they don't they, they don't vote basically. And in the case, uh, it basically means that the that the that the court couldn't couldn't find a, or provide a, a solution or a final decision for for the thing that is being disputed. Probably in most of the cases, uh, voiding uh, an action it could basically mean uh, canceling the same as rejecting or canceling the action. But again, it's up to the disputable lab. You will need to handle that and specify that yourself. Um, and there's one more case. Uh, so summing up, uh, we saw uh, the registration that, uh, as I said before, it's more like a configuration step uh, in order to link disputable apps to the to the agreement. We saw the way to notify um, an agreement that the new uh, a new action is happening in the in the disputable app. We saw the ways to receive notifications from the agreement tab. Uh, based on the on the actions that we have already uh, notified uh, the agreement app for, and there's one more uh, that is called close action. That this is used for the for the happy path. Um, so let's let's see an example here. Um, let's see you submit a new delayable to the delay app, and and basically you wait uh, until the delay period that you have defined for your app. And you can basically execute your your script. Uh, if during the the life cycle of that script uh, it never it, it wasn't challenged, so there there was no dispute. So you simply uh, notify the agreement app that that appeared at some point, but then you waited uh, the delay period and you basically can execute um, the script. Uh -huh. Then you what would be ideal to save some gas to the users is to notify the agreement, okay, and I already closed this because it has already been executed. And that's that's uh, that's the intention of this uh, uh, this other function. Um, of course, the agreement is going to perform, again, uh, it's an abstraction, but the agreement is going to check, okay, there's no ongoing disputes and blah, 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 so I will allow you or not to do that. But that's another uh, another story. Yet. Well, maybe maybe we can get into the details of the agreement up, but I'm trying to to strike that uh, for now. So these are more or less uh, well, not, not more or less. These are basically the the things that you should know how to handle in your disputable apps uh, to make them disputable, <laughs> uh, a bit redundant. Uh, but yeah. Um, so. Yeah, not, not sure if you have some questions. I would love to uh, see an example to to see how how this could be implemented. Uh, but yeah, wanted to know if it's if it's uh, if it makes sense. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I think it's yeah, really, 
I have a question about the voice action. So mm -hmm. it basically means, for example, in the context of uh, the, the voting app, you should mm -hmm. close the action every time uh, the about, about is prepared, for example. Yeah. Um, okay. This is, um, yeah. So just to show a quick sample uh, about the, what you just said about the voting app. Uh, that's, uh, Having committed these changes, so it's like a uh, yeah, but oh, where is it here? Yeah, yeah. That's basically the idea. Um, again, this is this step is more or less redundant because uh, there are ways to handle this situation. Uh, I mean, actually, if you don't close the action, if you implemented the integration properly. It shouldn't matter. It, um, let me let me explain why. Because um, if you already executed the action, and the the good thing is that you should check against the agreement if something is going on. So when you're trying to execute the action, if you're not making any checks with the agreement, well, basically you're 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 messing it up because uh, it basically means that you may not know. Uh, if, if something is being challenged or disputed, unless you're storing that information when you're notified uh, from the from the agreement, uh, that, that's a, a probably a good practice. Um, but again, it's like a safest, the, the safest way uh, is to go to the agreement and, and say, okay, I'm trying to do this. Like, is, is that okay? Uh, can, I, can I move forward? Uh, and the agreement is going either to fail or, or well, in this case, you're trying to close an action that it's been disputed is going to fail. Uh, but again, um, probably you can solve that in a different way. So happy to 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 see if there are any 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 opinions or yeah, if you see any other better way to to handle this case. But but yeah, the, the intention there is just notifying the, uh, the agreement that okay, this this action is done. Uh, so. The agreement uh, in the future will save will save time for for will save time for for other users to notify. Okay, you cannot challenge this action. This has already been closed by the by the dispute of lab, so you won't offer that that option to the to the, to the users. Otherwise, if you never notify the, the agreement, the agreement may not know that the action was already executed. So it will keep offering people to challenge, and when they try to challenge, it will. Well, again, if you implemented the integration, probably you should fail because when the, I don't know if unless you support, for example, receiving multiple challenges. Again, uh, the idea is that part of the decisions relies on the on the disputable lab, and you will need to handle them uh, in this in these notifications uh, or callbacks, and 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 the others remains on the on the agreement app. So it's like a super trusted communication between both both uh, parts um, but it needs it needs to be well uh, integrated so that's that's probably one of the things I uh, that I want to receive more, more feedback about like uh, as, as developers how much do you think uh, that you need to understand this to in integrate this properly or if you think it's Probable that <laughs> probable the the developers uh, mess it up uh, while trying to integrate it. Yeah, that's uh, it's a working progress strategy. So yeah, if you if you guys have any uh, recommendations or suggestions, uh, we'd love to hear them. I, I have one question, Pablo. Uh, do you have yep. um, some example about uh, the implementation of of rejecting and voiding to see the difference? Yeah. Um, actually, okay. no. Uh, so, uh, I think the the case for voided is probably going to be uh, like it's probably going to essentially either call on dispute rejected or on dispute allowed, but it allows the disputable app to determine which because the um, the court kind of has three possible outcomes. So you want to be able to specify um, what happens in each outcome. Um, it may be the same as one of the other outcomes. It may be different. Um, 
but you're going to you've got three possible like responses from the court so that is going to be kind of a, a configuration that need to be uh, not, a, on the, not necessarily because... a configuration but a like it could be a configuration but uh it, it has to be something that the dis disputable app determines exactly yeah, but i mean if, if if you are going to when you are avoiding an, an, uh, an action if, if you need to decide uh, if you want are going to reject it or kind of approve it, uh, it needs to be set it up in the beginning of the as a configuration or that's that's where my working well, is. Well it's it's part of the it's going to be part of the of your logic in, in this bit of that. So I, it's not a configuration but you have already stated what you're going to do when they happen. So for example I, I'm showing here um the case of the voting app, as you can see, um, for when it, when when the dispute level is voided, we're basically uh, doing the same as when it's rejected. So this means that the voting app will treat uh, rejects or void uh, actions from the court as 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 in, in the same way. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I, I I want to go because, for example, it, this is something that uh, needs to be. Change for example, on the onboarding of the of a of a DAO when you're doing the configuration for the app, or <laughs> no, 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 this yeah, this for the app. No, it will be it will be implemented in the app. So you uh, okay. basically it's not not configurable. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, but I mean, I mean you but can you make can it you configurable, but you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, again, this you define how you. How you treat these callbacks in your app so if you want to make a configuration to make a jump between uh, one behavior or another you can make that work if, if you want but again the the, the like the base uh, uh disputable app architecture is not defining any any specific behavior about that it's delegating that decision to you okay um, so well, n n nothing of this uh, is intended to be, for example, uh, configured on the onboarding when you are installing, creating a DAO. Uh. Um, again, I think, I think it's um, it de it depends on each this this little lab. So, for example, for the case of voting, uh, we're not going to provide that. But if you would like to have a configuration like allowing the 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 user that is installing the delay app in the onboarding process to say, okay, when the court rejects, I would like to cancel. When the vote voids, I would like to accept, for example, or I would like to cancel. If you want to make that available for the user, you will need to provide that for, from the dispute of that. Cool. And, and, I, and your rationale, uh, do you guys think that is not useful or is for another reason? No, um, I guess we we haven't thought about providing that like that, that decision to the user because it's um, we wanted to make the this well in, in our case the voting app to work in a in a single way like voided or rejected actions are going to be cancelled uh, and that's it uh, we're not allowing you to decide what to do with that. But it could be it could be an interesting uh, thing to to do a, do a little bit of research. Um, not sure, Luke. Maybe you're probably the one that's more closely to some users. So not sure if you if you think this could be useful uh, to them. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it uh, it is definitely contextual. Um, so thinking through how the app would be uh, be used in general. Um, I think that like uh, one one thing that this makes me wonder is is it possible if, if uh, you had on dispute voided um, to say we're not going to slash either the challenger or the uh, proposer, but we are going to cancel the vote. Um, I don't know if that's mm -hmm. possible with the, the current framework, and it's, I don't think it's a huge deal either no. way, but. No, it would no, but again, those are like potential future additions that we could have, like allowing the disputable lab 
how to handle uh, the, the collateral deposits uh, in each of these cases. For example, okay, go and slice them or, no, I don't know, unlock, unlock the, the, the deposits, you know. Yeah, I, I think like, in most cases you'll, you'll want to reject the boat. Um, but there, there are some instances where like it would maybe make sense to uh, allow it because you're worried that like uh, the relationship between the dispute resolution provider is like going to prevent you from changing the dispute resolution provider uh, or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I think in general, um, having it just reject the vote in the case that there's like, uh, uh, like the, the assumption is that like if it wasn't resolved in favor of the proposer, then we should probably just err on the side of like stopping it now. Um, and then they can always resubmit uh, yeah um, yeah but a good thing I, I think here is that the developer is, is can decide that you know how to yeah. how to handle each of these these cases um, is is there is there some documentation somewhere that specifically out like under what circumstances the uh, voided the undisputable voided function will be called Right, and specifically what what situation the court needs to be in in order to avoid a dispute. Um, if the court refuses to rule. Yeah. yeah okay. And but like, under what situations does that does that happen? Is that just when the jurors don't 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 vote? It's either when they don't vote or they decide as a majority to say refuse to vote, um, which is a specific option. Um, like an example might be like the metadata is corrupted and they really can't tell like <laughs> whether it should be yes or no um or like uh maybe it's in a completely different language and that so the the rules of the court are basically uh if it's not in english we're not going to rule uh things like that that are, are totally subjective on the like court policy side um could result in in sort of like expectations there um yeah. and and sort of like the, the the jurors could converge on a refuse to to vote ruling. Actually, it, it, it happened here with one of the, the disputes that we submit for the upmining. Uh, this was this one. Yeah, this was uh, the dispute that we created with the wrong metadata. Yeah. I mean, we fucked up with the uh, we mixed with the description and the and the evidence. I think I, I don't remember, but anyway. Uh, in this case, um, one guy basically allowed the action and the other one uh, refused the, the vote. And in this case, uh, how the protocol works is that it prioritizes the, the refuse uh, since it's a, it's a due here. And yeah, basically the dispute was, was refused. Um, so, yeah, um, I would I would love to know more uh, about what do you think, guys? Do uh, you find it useful, uh, interesting? Uh, you think it sucks? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, would you would it be useful to provide any any other? Kind of documentation uh, to about about this. Uh, yeah, you think it's something missing that we should uh, probably make clear uh, in some way. It might be useful if there's a document that the specific plans how to migrate an Aragon app to a disputable app, and just briefly describes the the, the sort of functionality of each of the individual um, functions that need to be implemented. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, sort of page probably not too much it's, it's pretty obvious once you uh, yeah i mean I might just speed up um, understanding yeah yeah that's a uh, great point actually i, I mean uh, I, I, I was going to say from my perspective but otherwise it is pretty it's pretty good like it's, it's really i think you thought about everything and I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed yet again um it's, it's really cool like, okay. yeah yeah, so, so that is a, it's a really good entry point for us. So once we can take a look to that, probably it's, it's going to be pretty straightforward. 
to, to what, Rodri? Ah, you have an open PR of creating an example of this oh. on the, the delay app, right? Yeah, I... I didn't have a chance okay. to take a look, but I, I, I guess that this that is going to be a, a pretty good example of, and pretty straightforward to replicate. Uh, I would try, um, yeah, and I, I would try to provide some some details about uh, how. Okay, uh, by look, um, I, I will try to provide some details about uh, how I how I thought uh, about that proof of concept. That's more aligned to what Will was uh, requesting. Uh, okay, I needed to implement this, this, and that, or the registration that should happen here and here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not defined agreement here and here because of this or that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I think that will probably make things easier, so you understand which are the the things that you need to care about when you're integrating any app with with agreement app, and to make it disputable. So that's a good thing, and actually will. Uh, it will serve us as documentation for, for the users in the future. Yeah, I think eventually on this, we probably want some sort of integration guide that can almost serve as like a, an audit guide as well. So if you're looking at a disputable app, here's like all the different things that you need to make sure they're doing with the agreement or like you're handling the, um, the, the callbacks correctly and, and reacting. Yeah based on those. Yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's a great feedback, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start working on that, uh, hopefully, hopefully soon, so I can share that to you. Awesome, Paco. I think that also it will make sense to, to have it on the, once ready on the, on the hack around, right? Like a combination, uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll make sure to. Yeah, actually, all these. I think we have the information uh, spread in multiple places because we've been uh, documenting yeah. this a lot. And but I need to. I need to consolidate like a single document so it's it's clear. It's super clear how. how yeah, the things I need to care about. Cool. That's good. Um, so yeah, uh, not sure if you would like to discuss something else. Uh, otherwise, I guess I can work on the on the migration slash uh, integration guide and, and share that with you. And we can have like a like a second call uh, next week to see if you have uh, if you have any chance to start playing with this a little bit. If you have further questions, um, yeah. Whatever it feels better to you guys as well. Great, thank you, man. Um, yeah, I think that I'm going to start doing some changes next week. Are we? So yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 Great. Um, okay, yeah. Let's let's keep syncing uh, through the Kibis channel, and I will try to share the integration guide uh, as soon as possible. Great. Thank you. We appreciate okay. it. Okay. No problem. Glad you, you enjoyed it.